Hello everybody, how are you? My name is Chef Rob. Uh, thank you to the Mastic Mauritius Shirley Public Library. Hello Debbie, hello everybody out there watching. I hope everybody had a great day. We've got a little warmer weather coming, so we're gonna get outside, right? So, March is always tough, at least here on the east, right? If you're in Florida or California, you're okay. So everybody, I'm going to make a dish that I absolutely love and I am going to be more than happy to enjoy this later for dinner. And it is a salmon hash with an arugula salad. And then I'm going to make a spinach and Munster pie, which is really easy, very quick. Uh, make that uh, really good in the freezer too. Everybody, my son Chris is here. So if you have any questions or comments, please let him know. Chris. Emily said hello. Hello, Emily. How are you? So everybody, let's start with the salmon hash because that does take a little bit of time. Debbie said, hi, Rob. I'm very, I'm very hungry. You are, Debbie. Well, drop on by. <laughs> You're not that far away. Usually you just come right down the room, right? And dinner served, huh? So everybody, this salmon hash, it's really good. Has a lot of flavor. Just going to turn on my burner here. Put in just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And then I am using some, and you want to use it this way, frozen hash browns. Just get them like this. Get the cubed ones, okay? And you want to get the oil nice and hot, okay? So you can use one and a half cups or double it if you're making it for more people, okay? Salmon's not for everybody. I personally love salmon, so I am going to start uh, getting this oil nice and hot. Add that in, add a little salt and pepper in there as well. I'm just going to dice up, get my vegetables ready. Just going to dice up some red onion. I needed a half, so I had one from a class uh, two days ago, I guess it was Saturday. Oh, we did a YouTube class Saturday, right Chris? Uh, Sunday, yesterday. Yesterday we did it, so that's when it's from, yeah. So I am just going to slice this down just like this. And cut it into small little dices. And it'll just kind of fall apart on you, just like that. And then I'm going to show you the salmon that I am using. If you are not a salmon fan, if you wanted to do shrimp, uh, shrimp would work well with this. Any type of seafood you could change this around with. Any type of firm fish that would really hold well together. Okay. So just wait for that. I want to hear the sizzle when it goes in there. Here is my salmon. I'll tell you a little bit about it. The salmon, it's, I'm using about a half pound. I want to cut it into half inch pieces. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this over here. Make sure you only keep the salmon or any fish for one to two days at the most, and then that is it, okay? Because fish does go bad. When you go into a seafood market, you should not smell seafood. If you do, something's not right. So again, about half inch pieces. Let's cut this into little cubes. Tamara said, I love salmon, but I think I always overcook it. Okay, it's possible. It is very easy to overcook. Uh, if you cut it into little cubes and you think, oh, maybe it still has a little life left in it. It has still a little roar in there. You can always just take one cube out, just cut it. And if it looks like it's done, just pull the rest right off. Okay. Uh, you know, when you get in salmon, you get the tail piece, which is pretty flat, not a lot to it, so it's going to cook really quick, okay? And then you have the higher piece where you get a, uh, takes a lot longer to cook. So again, half inch cube pieces, just going to throw this on this plate right here. And I am using fresh arugula for this. All right, I can see that oil is nice and hot. So I am gonna put in about one and a half cups of the home fried potatoes, hash browns. I'm just gonna season it with some kosher salt and some black pepper. Just kind of season it well. 
and we want to get them nice and brown, nice and crisp. And a little fresh brown black pepper here. We'll leave that over to the side, and we're just going to kind of keep at it. Just going to go back in there every once in a while, just kind of mix it around. I'm going to leave the salmon to the side because I'm going to cook that in a little while. I want to tell you a little, a little bit about salmon. Farm raised, it has a lot more fat than the uh, wild. Uh, uh, than the wild, it's forty six percent more calorie, so it does have it, but it has a nice milder taste. Uh, for somebody that isn't sure if they like salmon, they're better off starting with the farm raised because again, it's milder. Okay, the um, the wild one. It does have a stronger flavor to it, but it has a lot more minerals, a lot more vitamins in it, a lot of potassium, a lot of zinc, okay? And what's good about the, uh, the wild salmon, it's a healthier, more free roaming fish, okay? So that is why it is one of the preferred ones. The best tasting salmon that I have ever had is called sockeye. Sockeye is really, really good. You can find it around here. Uh, local fish markets that have it. I think Costco actually has it too. Do you pay more? Absolutely you do. But that's with anything. Anything with quality, you're going to pay more. So while this is cooking, I'm just going to cut my bell pepper. Just going to cut one full one. Okay, a red one. You can use the red or the green. Get all that white out. Get all those little seeds. And if anybody is new to me, uh, to my classes, uh, my name is Chef Rob, and we do these every night. And my Facebook page is Simply Creative Chef Rob. This Saturday, if you go to my Facebook page, we're doing a whole big Irish event. And that is uh, Saturday at 3 o'clock. So just cut this into little strips, and then we're going to cut it into little cubes. If I need to add a little bit more oil, I can do that. Okay. And I'm going to season the salmon with a little bit of kosher salt and black pepper on the outside too. Okay, so this way when you're cooking this, you have all your vegetables nice and prepared. Okay. Take a second here. This weekend, uh, after I do some corned beef, I'll have some of these cubes here. I can always make some corned beef and cabbage, corned beef and hash. Okay, it would work really, really well. While this is cooking, let's make some sauce for this. We're going to use the Greek yogurt. Okay. So the Greek yogurt, I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup. Just going to take this right here. Add that, a little bit more. So a quarter cup of the Greek yogurt. One tablespoon of the fresh dill. Just kind of chop this up. You have to wash this really, really well. And then just kind of cut it really small, just like this. If you like your dill, you can always add more. Dill is very strong but perfect for seafood. Add that right in there. And then about a half of a tablespoon of the Dijon mustard into the sauce. Okay, we're just gonna mix this up really good. And then we can reserve this on the side. If you like your mustard, Add a little bit more to it. It's a nice light sauce. So I have my salmon all ready. Just going to season that with a little bit of salt and pepper. Anybody out there have any questions, comments, please? Uh, let's go. Come on. Don't be quiet. Let's make sure he's not quiet. A little bit of salt. A little black pepper on here. Okay. 
So while this is cooking, what I am going to do, and I'm just going to try and spread this out so it really hits the bottom of the pan really well. Okay. I am going to go over and slide over to the spinach and Munster pie, and then we'll come back and visit this. Because you do want to make sure those hash browns get really nice and crisp, and then I have to cook the salmon as well. Yes, Chris? Eileen asks, can you use dill in the jar? Dill in the jar. The I guess you're talking the dried dill. You can. Uh, I'm a fan of more of the fresh ingredients. If you are using the dried dill, put half of the amount, okay? Because the dried is always stronger, okay? So be really cautious because you can always add more, okay? So I'm going to tell you some of the things about this, the crustless spinach and Munster pie. Very easy to put together. Use boxed frozen spinach. Don't get the leaf one. Get the one that's chopped, okay? But the main thing about this is make sure you get all of that water out, okay? Very, very important. So what I do is I just kind of let this defrost, and you can see the little puddle of water. But much more will come out, okay? So if you see this, this here is two of those 10-ounce, almost like the bird's eye type of uh, chopped spinach. So just want to get all of that excess water out. So take your time, mash that up really, really well. You can put this into like a nine inch pie pan, which I am going to do tonight. Or you can make almost like little mini muffins, little quiches like that. Uh, you could put this into one of the uh, prepared uh, pie crusts. That would work as well. Okay, I think I got that all. You don't want this to be watered down. So I'm just going to add this spinach right here into this bowl. Now, what I do is about an hour before the program, I take a block of the cream cheese. Try to use the Philadelphia. It's a good brand. Uh, you can use the reduced fat or the whole fat. Okay, The fat-free just would not melt really good in here and blend really good with the spinach. So take it out about an hour ahead of time because then you get it to room temperature. Just get a little softened and then it's a little easier to work with. Okay. Tear that open. Okay, you need the full block. So just kind of make a little slit right down here. And then just drop it right in. Everything with this really gets mixed together. And whenever I'm making these, I usually make like double this. And that way I can put one into the freezer. Just going to go right back over here. I want to check out these hash browns. Starting to brown just a little bit. Just going to add another, just a little squirt of the olive oil. Okay. So we're going to add two of the whole eggs. Eggs right now, they are really down in price. Uh, I see them as low as 59 cents a dozen. Usually that's at like a Lidl or something like that. But even like the BJ's or Costco's, they are really cheap right now. So we're going to put in two eggs. Let's drop that right in there. Okay. And then we're going to add in some Parmesan cheese, fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Add about a third of a cup. So you can ballpark it, you know, pretty much close to it. I'm just going to mash this up really good together. And then we'll add our seasonings as well. So everybody, this weekend on my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, I will be doing a corned beef and cabbage in a slow cooker, Irish soda bread muffins, mint chocolate chip brownies with those little Andes candies on it, and then I'm going to be doing a St. Patrick's Day peppermint ice cream shake, okay? And that will be March 13th at 3 o'clock. You can make it along with me, or you can just watch and watch me work, like you're doing right now, probably. And anytime 
we're doing these classes, please feel free to make these dishes along with me, okay? Any, any class we're really doing. You should all have the recipes. I know Debbie always puts, it, puts them up there or sends them out to the patrons that sign up. Getting there. I am going to add in a little bit of salt and pepper just for a little bit of seasoning. So a little kosher salt, a little black pepper. If you are not a Munster fan, okay, any mild cheese really would do. Provolone, mozzarella cheese, Monterey Jack, the Monterey Jack and Cheddar mix that they make, any of that would be fine, okay? And then just a little bit of garlic powder. Just kind of about a quarter teaspoon, just a little bit. Looks like I put it a lot in, but it just was slow coming out. Yes. Debbie said the recipes are on the library's program calendar. Great. Thank you, Debbie. Oh. So I am going to get this ready where I can put these hash browns in here in a minute. Just going to go back to this. So to prepare the pan, just get a dish like this, okay? Even those to-go ones, those little um, aluminum ones are good. Just take a little bit of the spray. Just give it a quick spray, not too much, because you don't want to get that taste of it in there, okay? And then take the pre-sliced Munster cheese, just like this. Just kind of separate them. This is about an eight ounce package. So you can either get a chunk and shred it, or just have the pieces like this. Years ago when I created this, and I was a personal chef, I used to actually put some on the bottom, and then I put some on the top as well. I did away with putting it on the bottom because it seemed to just kind of get lost down there. So I always said, I'll just add some into the mixture or put more on top. I found that you wouldn't waste the cheese really, and everybody really got to taste it. So this is an eight ounce pack. So you do want to use that all up. And if you like it nice and crisp, just finish it off under the broiler. It goes in a 350 oven for about 35 minutes. And I'm gonna tell everybody about some classes we have coming up. Debbie and I picked out some classes the other day. We tried to do desserts, we tried to do dinners. So we try to really switch it up. What do you got, Chris? Anything? Nope, don't see anything. No? Okay. All right, I'm just going to slide this out of the way right here. Okay. It's absorbing the oil a lot, so I just want to make sure let me get that really sizzling. Here is the fresh arugula. Pretty soon, a few months, we'll have our local fresh arugula that'll have a nice peppery taste to it. So, the one that you get kind of from California, it tastes good, but it's not as it's not as peppery, not that lemony, herby, you know, taste that we're used to local. So there's nothing like the local produce. Again, you could put this into little muffin tins. I'm just going to take this mixture right here, just kind of pop this right in here. Just allow it to sit about 10 minutes before you do serve it, okay? I told you this one is really, really easy. Now, I want to give you some different ideas that you could do with this. This spinach and Munster pie. Different things you can put in here are some roasted red peppers. You could add sun-dried tomatoes to this. Take the canned or the frozen artichokes. Just make sure all the water is out of it. Put it together because spinach and artichoke, of course, goes together really well. Okay. If you want to add any meat in there, 
pe you could do pepperoni, okay, uh, any of those type of uh, meats and they would go good. Okay. All right, these are getting nice and brown now. This is what I want to see. Okay, slide on back here. We are just going to put this monster cheese right on top. You just kind of go around just like that. You'll be able to cover the whole thing. You may have a little bit left. You just put, put it right on top. It's all going to bake right into this. Make sure if you're not eating it tonight that you put it in the uh, refrigerator uncovered for about an hour. Let it cool down and then seal it really good. Okay, this will last about three days in the refrigerator uh, without anything going bad on it. I like to just kind of piece it together, this cheese. Tomorrow night we have a Irish soda bread workshop, and that one is at the Taft Public Library in Massachusetts. And that will be on their Zoom, so if anybody wants to watch, please go to that library and you can get their Zoom. And this is as easy as it is. You bake this 350, 35 minutes, and just let it sit for about 10 minutes. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to put these in my bowl right over here. Okay. Just going to add a little bit more olive oil in here. I'm going to add my onions and peppers in. Okay, that is sizzling already. We're just going to let this cook a little few minutes. I am going to put in a little bit of kosher salt in here. And what that actually does, it kind of makes the vegetables sweat, makes them cook a little quicker too. Okay. And then I will cook up the salmon and then we'll bring all these ingredients together and it really makes for a really beautiful dish. You can put this in a bowl, you can put this on a big platter. It really depends how you want to serve it. And then always have some fresh lemon on the side. I just want to get these little kicks out of here. So I'm going to tell everybody about some of the classes that we have coming up while we are waiting for these peppers and onions to cook down. Again, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, the Taft Public Library, and that is uh, the Irish Soda Bread. And then on Wednesday at 4.30, this is at the Pound Ridge Public Library, and that is on their Zoom. We're doing uh, a dessert called Brookies. If you ever never heard of a brookie, it's half brownie and half cookie, okay? So you put the combination together, it's really good. It's a children's program, but I have many of the adults that do it with me on there. And then at 6.30, uh, we're at the Tuxedo Park Public Library. Never knew there was a Tuxedo Park. Uh, but we're there at 6.30, and that is a Zoom and Irish soda bread, and we're doing another dish with that one as well, okay? So some of the dishes that we have coming up, the next April one that we are doing for the Mastic Shirley uh, Public Library will be a lemon and thyme, it's a bread, it's a buttermilk bread, and then we're going to do raspberry, mascarpone, stuffed French toast. It has almond extract in it. Make it with me. Have brunch for dinner that night, okay? Make the bread, make everything. It's really, really delicious, okay? And then in May, I'm making an avocado and beefsteak tomato salad and a vegetable bolognese with an orquette pasta, which is really good. Okay. I just want to get these a little more soft, a little of the peppers and the onions. I have my sauce already done right here. I have my lemon ready. And then we'll just finish it off with the salmon, cook that up really quick.
And then in June, we're going to do a bread. It's called a strawberry festival bread. You have to make that one with me. It's incredibly moist, has a lot of flavor in there, and there's fresh strawberries inside the bread. And we're going to put a vanilla glaze on top. So it's really good. Yes, Chris. Tamara said that all sounds amazing. Thank you so much. Tamara, I know you'll watch, right? And Carol asks, when and where is the raspberry mascarpone French toast class? That one is the next. Uh, class in uh, April, and that is at the Mastic Merchants Public Library. I keep saying Mastic Merchants, Merchants, Shirley, I, I get it all. So you got too many uh, communities that join in there, Debbie. Can you just combine it and say, like, Debbie's Community Public Library? Tamara said, absolutely. Okay, so I am going to add in the salmon now to this, and the peppers and the onions will continue to get nice and soft. The salmon does not take that long. It may take about three, four minutes. Love salmon. I love chicken. Chicken was always my favorite, but now salmon. Who would ever thought salmon hash, right? The combination of all this really goes with the dill, the arugula, the lemon. It's really good like that. I'm just going to get my nice big serving bowl right here together. The lemon. Now, one other thing, sometimes the dressing can be a little on the thicker side, okay, just because of the yogurt. So, if you need to thin it just a little bit, just add a little bit of water, a couple tablespoons, okay, just like that. It just loosens it right up, and there's still plenty of flavor in there, okay, and you can see, it's more kind of soupy. Don't overcook the salmon. Just make sure it's got a nice coating on it. Yes, Chris. And Pretty said, hi, Chris and Rob. Just came on. Hi, Pretty. How are you? I hope you're doing good. And then Debbie said, Chef Rob will be doing the stuffed French toast and lemon thyme bread class via the Massac Merchant Shirley Library Facebook page on Monday, April 12th at, at 7 p.m. April 12th. I will be there, Debbie. And then... If you have children, okay, uh, families over at the uh, Master Gorgeous Shirley Library, please go there because I do kits for them. And then uh, sometimes, like they have Irish soda bread ones now. They're probably all gone, but then in uh, April, May, June, July, August, we're doing all a different kit every day. And there's YouTube videos that go with it. So even if you're not doing the kit, watch the YouTube videos. So go to the library there and, and see them. Yes, and Pretty said she's doing fine, thanks. That's good, go ahead. Okay, so you're gonna see just a hint of pink in this, a little flesh in the salmon. That means I haven't overcooked it. I'm actually gonna put this going to make a smaller amount. Chris is not a salmon fan, right, Chris? Nope. You know what? I never was until about five, six years ago. Now, the best. Okay. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave some of this right here. I'm going to take this right here. Take the dressing. I'm going to use about half of it on here. Okay. I just want to show you how to serve it and how to serve it really nice and fancy for when we can have company again. Wouldn't that be nice? Company again. We'll get there. Okay, just give this a light toss. Don't put too much on there because you don't want to weigh it down. Okay. Add a little bit more. Like that. 
And if you want to take a little bit of lemon, just add a little hint of lemon to this right here. All right, and that goes really good with the arugula. You gotta put a mound right in the center. Okay, check this salmon. That is ready to go. I'm gonna add in the hash browns now back in here. Let's see, let's get nice and hot again. Jack asked, where can I get those fancy presentation bowls and plates? I can't find them, find, I can't find them not even online. Well, I have to be honest, I bought them quite a long time ago, but they have to be online somewhere. They really, really do. Somewhere, go any of the, you know, maybe the Coles, something like that, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, they all have these different nice shaped bowls, okay? Uh, the other day we were doing a class and we put everything on a nice long plate just like this. Oh, we did the Irish soda red muffins, put them right across like that. And the presentation on them is really, really good. And then a bowl like this where it has that little potato chip swoop to it, just makes it really good. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to add in about three tablespoons of my yogurt mixture. Season it with a little bit of salt and pepper again. Emily said, my hubby said it looks so good and yummy. Thank you. Hello, hubby. How are you? I miss you. And this is a, as easy as it gets. And now what you do, just take some of this, turn it off the burner because you don't want to keep cooking that salmon. Okay. And I kind of like to put this salmon hash right around the arugula salad, just like that. So the salmon with the potatoes really starts to stretch out when you add the onions, the peppers, okay? So just be really, really careful. I'm just going to take a piece of lemon wedge. Emily said, he said he's doing fine. That is good. I knew he would be doing fine. I knew he'd be doing good. This is the way it would look. This is our spinach and Munster pie that would go into the 350 oven for 35 minutes. Again, if you want this a little crisp, just put it under the broiler. But this is a really nice brunch. Again, you can change it with shrimp, anything like that. I want to take this off of the burner so that way it doesn't continue cooking. I would love for people to have some questions or any comments on anything or anything that you would like to see us make sometime. We did a class the other day. It was a totally different class, but we had a good turnout for it. And it was at the Rockville Center Public Library. And the person that hired me there said, how about we do an Ask Chef Rob class? So I didn't, no cooking, no nothing. It was just like, I just answered questions and all that, you know, which we could do right now. But you get the cooking with this. So it's like, buy one class, get one free. So the other day, we had a great time doing that. And what I did was I had all my different gadgets, all the different things that I always use, whether uh, it's this burner right here, uh, my little food processors, the immersion blender, my panini grill, um, the air fryer, because air fryers are in. Now the air fryer, I have one of the portable ones, and I will be doing an air fryer class. And I'm going to do fried pickles. And then uh, a few other things, buttermilk fried chicken too. But now when you buy your home oven, you can get the air fryer built in there. And I have used it. Now, like if we're making chicken parmesan, instead of putting it into the oil, something like that, we put it, no oil, right into the oven, air fryer, and it's great. And you save a lot of calories too. Let's see. Emily said, we got a lot of wild game. Then she said, we have a lot of salmon. I'll make it. 
Then Rena said, hi, is that non-fat or low-fat plain Greek yogurt? It is low-fat. Tamara said, me and the hubby love the presentation. Thank you. And Profran said, looks nice. I bet it tastes good. That yogurt sauce reminds me of the sauce my daughter uses on cucumbers in the summer. I can see that. Yep, a little dill, the sauce in the summer, uh, maybe a little white wine vinegar in there, right? And that would be good. So we have a lot of different summer uh, classes coming up, spring classes, summer classes coming. Uh, always check out the Mastic Merch's uh, Shirley Public Library. Uh, yes, Chris? Tamara said fried pickles are big in Tennessee. I can see that, yeah. You probably got a great recipe. Um, we do it with the panko, and then we put it in the air fryer. And then, again, we're doing like the uh, buttermilk uh, fried chicken, uh, and we're going to do that in the air fryer as well. Air fryer's in. You know, just like somebody asked me the other day, do I do the Instant Pot, you know? That is one thing that I just not ha I haven't had time to really get into. And they said, have you heard anything about it? All I hear is people love their Instant Pot. Uh, crock Pot, I've used it more since COVID than I've ever did in my life. Uh, this Saturday when I do the corned beef and cabbage, it's going to be in a crock pot. It's going to take eight hours, so... Uh, well, we start the program at 3, so what time will, uh, yeah, about 11 o'clock, wow. Emily said good night, Chef Robin Chris. Good, good night, night, Emily. Good night. So, anybody, any last questions before we do go? Always a pleasure, Debbie. Uh, can we camp out in the parking lot and do a food program? Just like, what is the program we watch, Chris? We watch that, uh, supermarket stakeout. Anybody out there ever watch that? Tamara said, maybe you could show me what to do with okra. All they do here is fry it. Okay. Uh, do you know how to... Okra Winfrey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can... As we get into spring with the okra, I can definitely do that. Uh, absolutely. Anybody else? Any other questions? Emily said, going to buy my corned beef tomorrow. And then Rena said, I watched that program... And let's see. Cabbage Debbie. for the corned beef and cabbage is really cheap right now. I saw a 19 cents shop right today. Good price. 99 last week. Debbie's Huge difference. Debbie said we're all very hungry at the library and sad we can't have leftovers. Miss you. And Tamara said LOL. Debbie, here. I'll put it in a to-go tin. You just drive by. I'll go like that. Okay. I'll, I'll pack this up for you. Okay. This, when it's done and it cools a little bit, just cut it into little wedges, just like you would a traditional quiche. Tamara said, I'm making a shepherd's pie for St. Patrick's. Ah. And then Emily said, that's where I'm going. Where? To Tamara's? <laughs> <laughs> Tamara, you're going to have company. Emily's coming to you for shepherd's pie. Debbie said, L LOL. <laughs> All right, everybody... Have a wonderful night. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And please go to my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob. And, of course, go to the Mastic Merchant Shirley Public Library to see what they have offering. Because they have so many different things. Paint night, music, uh, jazz, uh, jazzercise, right? Whatever, you, yoga. Tamara said yay. And then <laughs> Emily said shop right. <laughs> and then Jack said thank you, chef. You're so welcome, everybody. Everybody have a great night. Good night, Debbie. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.